am going to fix this mosquito zapper, which is not working fine. Its spark goes low in a very short time, so first of all I will check whether it is charging or not. I already charged it before. I will put the electric plug in the socket. The LED light has started to glow. The light seems like it is blinking when seen in the camera, but actually, it is not blinking. I will turn it on. This green LED light should glow when I press this button on the side. The green light is not glowing properly, so I will check why is it not working. Before testing it, be careful to power it off, because the net has high voltages in it, which could cause a shock. The person does not die with it, but it will make you feel your soul is gone out from your body once, so never play with it for fun. It has three layers of nets inside it. Two are on the corners and one is in the center. The outer layers are negative and the centered net is positive. When the positive and the negative meet, then the spark is produced inside it. When the mosquito or fly tries to go from inside the net, then the positive and the negative meet each other. Due to their bodies, short circuit happens, and they die from the electric shock. and it has been opened this is the circuit inside it one led light is installed at the top which is blue in color which is used to attract the mosquitoes to this racket this light works sometimes but its spark is not working fine a battery is installed here so let's check the voltages of this battery 2.7 volts are across the battery the battery could be bad or it could have no charge which is why it shows low voltages this capacitor seems to be blown. I will remove this circuit. I will see whether this capacitor is used to filtrate DC electricity. I will discharge the capacitor first to prevent myself from being electrocuted. It is fine. I will desolder these wires. I have removed the red wire. And now the black wire. I will now remove the screws from the circuit. I have removed the screw. And now I will remove the circuit from its plastic body. Why has this capacitor blown up? So I have clearly understood now. 220 AC volts are given to its charging port. The neutral wire from the charging line is attached here to the capacitor. If the line passes through the capacitor, then the chance for the capacitor to blow up is 100%. This was the charging wire I used with it. I was using a 2-pin switch to charge it. I will now use a 3-pin switch instead. I will mark this to install the charging cable always in the correct position. See, this connector can be installed on both sides. Putting this cable on both sides does not make any difference, it works, but I need the life of this zapper to increase by installing the wire on the correct polarity. I will desolder the capacitor by adding some solder to it. The capacitor has started to loosen up. I will remove it now. The body of the capacitor has come out. The internal part of the capacitor has also come out of the circuit board. The value of this capacitor is 220 microfarads and 16 volts. I have replaced the capacitor with a new one now. This capacitor is also of the same value. If a bigger value capacitor is installed, it will have a voltage difference, and the voltages will be out of order. That is why I have installed the same value of the capacitor. Also, here, it is already mentioned AC neutral and AC line. I have removed the rest of the wires that were attached to it to test the voltages of this circuit. Are there proper voltages for the battery? You can see I have supplied electricity to the circuit board. The LED light is glowing. This is its negative pins. First, let's check the voltages on the capacitor. 15 volts are passing here. A diode is installed here. 29 volts are passing through this diode. 13 volts are on the other pin. And 13 volts are over here as well which is attached to the diode. I will now test how much voltages are passing through the battery. It should be 5 to 6 volts. 29 volts are passing to the pins of the battery, which are too high. This means that some other component is bad in this circuit board. So, let's check where the issue is. As you saw, 29 volts were passing through the battery where it had to be charged. I have changed this capacitor again with a new one of the same value. The capacitor I changed before was causing issues, and it was already a new capacitor, but it was still causing problems in the voltages. I forgot to tell you that it can be charged through a micro USB cable as a port is given in this circuit. So, I will test it as well to check if the rest of the circuit is working fine or not. Before testing that, first, let's finish testing the voltages first. I have passed electricity through the circuit board. After replacing another new capacitor, 
it's now showing 11.55 volts. I replaced this capacitor off the camera, but immediately when I checked the voltages 5 volts were passing through it. But these voltages are increasing gradually, and if we kept charging it, the voltages could increase to the same 29 volts. This could blow the capacitor, or some other problem could be caused. The battery could go bad or blast. These are very high voltages to charge this 4 volt battery. A maximum of 5 to 6 volts should be used to charge it, and if the battery stays charged, it won't be that much of a problem. The voltages have increased to 12 volts. This capacitor, a few diodes, and some resistors are installed in this circuit. This is a very bad design circuit. I will now show you how does it works through this mini USB port. For that, I will desolder these blue wires from the circuit. To have no doubt in your minds, I have attached a mini USB wire to its port. I will insert the charger into the electric socket. The LED light has started to work. I will now turn it on and press this button. The green light has started to glow when I pressed the button. Now I will test the spark. This means the rest of the circuit is okay. It is a very poor design which will make the capacitor blow up again. I have now attached all the wires back to the circuit. I have removed the AC 220 volt charging adapter. It is a very cheaply built circuit, and regulated voltages are not flowing through it. This voltage damages the batteries, making the zapper not to work. The life of this battery is also dead. I have checked and charged it overnight. It is still discharged. Let's check how much voltage this battery shows. It is showing 1.8 volts, which are very low to run the circuit. I will install a more powerful battery in this circuit. I have bought this new battery, which is of the same brand. This battery is bigger and more powerful than the already installed battery in it. Now I have to find a way to install it inside this racket. If the racket is in a smaller size, and a bigger battery can't be fitted into it, then, the battery can be installed with the outer body of the racket. This battery will be fitted in this zapper racket. As I see it in this position, it can be fitted. The supporting plastic pieces made here are only for strengthening the racket body, or only for holding this old battery. I will cut these pieces and make them smaller according to this battery. I have cut the pieces from both sides of the racket. Now if I fit the battery in this position, the cover does not close properly, and I fit it in this position. Still, it is causing problems. I will still fit it in this position. But how? Let me show you. I heated the plastic with the heat gun. Now, I will test the battery voltages before attaching the wires to it from the circuit. The 4.24 volts pass through the battery which is an appropriate voltage. This battery has more amperes than the previous battery, so it will last longer. I will install the wires from the circuit with the correct polarity of the battery, the negative wire with the negative terminal of the battery, the positive wire with the positive terminal of the battery, and will put it inside the body of the racket. I will now join the wires of the net with the circuit board. Both the outer wire connections of this zapper racket net are in the same place. The net in the center has this single wire which is red in color. Before soldering the wires, I will power off the circuit because the battery has a heavy amount of charge now. I will now solder these wires. Now it has been fixed, and no one will be able to know whether a new battery is installed in it or not. I will now press the button. The green light is glowing properly now. I will now short circuit the nets. It is now generating a good amount of spark, enough to kill the mosquitoes. I am tired now, and I run on coffee, so buy it for me on Patreon. Click the link on the screen to visit. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch the next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.